Hi, are you ready to kickstart your yoga practice? Well, if you've been sitting too long or lazing around too much, or just need a structured program to get you back into your yoga groove, then this series is for you. This is a kickstart program that has seven different practices. Yes, you can do seven different practices one day at a time, or just mix them all up. You'll find that they're easy, accessible, and guess what, they're fun. Hi, I'm Sherry Zach Morris, and I'm a certified yoga therapist, and I am the founder of Yoga Vista and I welcome you to this practice. It's a seven day challenge. Each class is about 15 to 25 minutes and we focus on lots of different themes. We'll focus on posture and balance and back care and movement and mobility and fun. This program is based on chair yoga. We will do poses that are sitting down. We'll do poses that are standing up. As always, you can pace yourself. You can stay seated the whole time. And when you're standing, you can hold on to the chair. That's the reason why we use a chair. It's our great companion to get us to be a little bit stronger. We are at the beautiful Rancho Guajome Adobe here in Southern California. Look at this beautiful environment. And every single one of these classes, we're gonna have a different location. So you'll have a beautiful tour of the Adobe as you work out with me. Always remember to check in with your doctor or your healthcare provider to make sure that these kind of practices are good for your health condition. As we age, we know that we need to take good care of ourselves, just like this adobe is so beautiful because it's been well taken care of. This series will help you do that. I hope you enjoyed this beautiful program I created for you here at the adobe, and I'll see you at the ranch. Namaste. 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 We'll see you at the ranch. Namaste. Hi, I'm Sherry Zach Morris, and I'm a certified yoga therapist, and I am here today to lead you through a chair yoga class focused on posture. So posture is something that we can see visually and it's something that actually degrades as we age and we can see that visually as well, right? So posture gives us a sense of grace and elegance just about the way we hold ourselves and the way we move. So I'm filming this segment right here in this beautiful ranch setting. It is the place of the courtyard where many, many weddings have happened over the centuries. It's a place where people gathered and had all their fineries on. So when we think about posture and how we hold ourselves, we want to feel like we are these elegant, graceful beings. And guess what? We can at any age. But this is the trick. Posture is conscientious, which means we have to be thinking about it. We have to notice and how we're sitting, we have to notice how we're standing, we have to notice how we're walking. Now it's not a 24 by 7 vigil, but it's something that we really do need to kind of etch into our awareness. So in this class we're going to be doing some seated poses and we're going to be doing some standing poses. Now one thing I want you to realize is that posture is of course a very visual thing. We can always notice people's posture, but there's also a very silent or let's say invisible component of posture and that is our organ function. And our heart and our lungs we need to have space for those organs to really be at their finest. So if we're all slumped over, you can imagine the heart and the lungs are not gonna be able to perform as well. And the other place is our digestive and elimination system. Yes, as we get older, that tends to get sluggish. And if we are just slumped over, if we're letting gravity just take all those organs and kind of smushing them down, you can't imagine that they're functioning very well, right? So everything about posture is lifting up towards the sky and defeating what gravity is trying to do, especially as we age. So as always, I want you to be mindful of the things that are not serving you today and explore the things that are serving you well. Trust your inner wisdom. So as we begin our class, let's notice what our posture is like just to begin with. Are we sitting back on our chair? Is our pelvis tucked under? Are we rolling our shoulders forward? Where's our head? All of those alignment things we have to think about when we're just sitting. And it doesn't mean sitting in a chair yoga class. It also means sitting in a restaurant, sitting in your car. Anytime you're sitting, we want to have good posture. So let's just get a couple of those load-bearing joints aligned. And that's going to be your shoulders and your hips right now. So if you look at from the side, you would see that the shoulders and the hips need to be aligned. So if you're leaning back a little bit, right, or you're rounding forward a little bit, let's try to see if we can get that corrected. The best way to do that is to just take those shoulders up, up, up towards your ears, up, up, up. See how you grow tall in your spine? Once you're tall in your spine, you're gonna roll those shoulders back. Yeah, so that gets those shoulders back into place, good. And then for your hips, making sure that the hips are in place, I want you to do just a gentle rocking motion. I want you to roll back on your sit bones, and then come all the way forward and arch your back, yeah. So you're gonna just roll back on your sit bones and you're gonna come up and you're gonna arch forward. So you maybe even notice what's happening in the lower part of your pelvis. Your two sit bones, 
they're called your ischial tuberosities, they are moving along with your back motion, right? Your pelvis motion. You want to make sure that those sit bones are right smack down on the chair. They're not tucked back like an arch and they're not tucked under like a rounded. You want to have them nice and solid. That is your perfect position when you're sitting here. Now, you're going to say, Sherry, it's a lot of work to sit like this. That's what I say. Posture is conscientious, which means we have to be conscientious of all the muscles that are involved just by sitting up straight. So right now, you're just going to make an assessment and you're going to say, can I sit like this for the next 10 minutes? Can I have the strength in my core, in my being, to sit like this for the next 10 minutes? If the answer is no, then guess what? I want you to scooch on back and use the back of the chair for support. Okay, don't worry about it. You can use the back of the chair, but slowly but surely, I want you to get to the point where you can sit up nice and tall on those ischial tuberosities and you can have your shoulders and your hips aligned and not use the back of the chair. That's your goal. Come back often and get, guess what? You'll get stronger and be able to do that. So sitting up nice and tall, good. Turn your palms facing up towards the ceiling. Yeah, that just rolls those shoulders back a little bit more. And then we'll close our eyes and just take a moment and just envision and just, um, Imagine this beautiful straight posture no matter what age you are. You can be strong and straight and graceful and elegant. Taking some nice deep breaths. Finding your awareness here. And gently flutter your eyes open. You can take your palms and you can flip them the back down. Good. We're going to start First with our shoulders. Our shoulders are probably the nemesis of bad posture. And the reason for this is this is feeling good when we slump like this, right? So we want to be able to get those shoulders back as best as we can. So sitting up as tall as you can, we're going to take one shoulder, one hand to your shoulder, and we're going to roll it backwards. Yeah. So this is going to encourage that shoulder joint to get into the right place in the socket. And what's so cool about shoulders is that it's a ball and socket, so it should be rolling around in there. And it doesn't matter if it's big or little circles. It doesn't matter. Let's do the other side. Good. Just warming up. We're just reminding the shoulders how they need to move in the socket. And let's do both. Yeah. Very good. And then we'll do a couple elbow kisses as we come together. Very good. And then reach your arms all the way out in front. Good. Take them all the way out to the side. The thumbs are up. Good. Reach them all the way out in front. All the way out to the side. And one more time. Reach them out in front. All the way out to the side. Good. Now flip your palms down towards the floor. Good. And then flip them up towards the sky. And then down and up. Good. Just simple movements for the shoulders. But guess what? The shoulders are the key component of your posture when you're sitting. So we want to make sure these shoulders are mobile. Good. And then the last time, we're going to take it all the way up, touch it to prayer, and bring it all the way back to your heart center. Good work. Shake your hands out a little bit, and then open and close your fingers a little bit. Good. And then how about roll those shoulders? Good work. Now I'm going to work a little bit on the mobility of the shoulder girdle itself. We worked at the socket, right? That little ball and socket movement. So your shoulder girdle, which composes your front of your shoulder, which is your collarbone area, and the back, your shoulder blades or your scapula, it actually sits on your body in a very interesting way. Your spine is here, but your shoulder girdle is here. And guess what? It can slide up and down. Yeah. So we want to feel that nice sliding motion of your shoulder girdle, which means we can get it back into place if it ever gets out of alignment because of poor posture. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do it with the shoulder plug-in, which I am now calling the airport scanner pose because it's the pose we do when we go through that scanner at the airport. So we're going to start with our arms here in cactus. Now cactus arms I know can be challenging for many of you. You can start with your elbows low or you can start with your elbows as high as your shoulders. You can decide the other way, either way it's going to work. Here we go. We're going to inhale up, up, up like you're in that scanner pose, right? And then we're going to take those thumbs almost like they want to touch. Good. And then we're going to take it down into cactus, but this time we're going to take those elbows far down, as far as you can. Now just notice where you can go. Maybe you're stopping here. Maybe you can go all the way down so your elbows touch your waist. Let's just keep on gliding. The shoulder is gliding up and down your spine. Do you feel that? Do you feel your shoulder blades dropping when you're down? You can even feel a tightness in your shoulder blade area. Good. And then when you're rising up, you could feel your shoulder blades probably almost up to your armpits. Yeah, so this motion, this shoulder glide, is very, very important to keep that mobility in your upper body so that you don't round and hunch. 
Good. And next time you're down with your elbows as tight, tight as you can, you're going to bring it out in front. You're going to hold a tray. Do you already feel like you're sitting up taller? I bet you do. And then take your hands all the way down to your laps and just take a moment, maybe even close your eyes and notice, wow, I think I'm actually sitting up a little taller. Good. And then gently open your eyes. Very good. And then take your hands and give them a little shake and let's shake them around. Loosen up. Loosen up the, the wrists and the fingers as well. They're all connected, right? Good. And then release it down. And now we're going to do something called throwing the frisbee. Throwing the frisbee I love is because it opens up the upper chest, right? We worked on the shoulder blade area, but now the upper chest, this area right in here, this is the area that gets tight. It's the pectoralis muscles. We have two groups of them, the majors and the minors, and they get tight when we're doing this. How do we get them open? We can do that with our frisbee. So grabbing a hold of the frisbee with your left hand, we're going to go like this and we're going to fling it out to the side. Good. And we'll do that four times. So that's twice. Maybe try to get a target, right? And three times and the next one, and four times. Good, you see how that opens up that shoulder? Good, let's do it to the other side. Here we go. Once, and throw it twice, and again three times, and four times. Very good, now those shoulders feel a little bit more open. Take your arms all the way out, big open stretch, good. Now lean back in your chair. We're just gonna take those pecs one little stretch further. As you lean back, keep your chin where it's at, and then flutter your arms back and forth. Oh yeah, if you're feeling a little pull and a little stretch in those pectoralis muscles, that's what we want. We want to gently get into those, good. And when you come all the way back, you'll give yourself a little bit of a hug, and then a little twisting, good. And then release it, and again, roll those shoulders. We'll take it into a nice sideways bend. So a lot of times with posture, what we're doing is we are fighting gravity all the time. Gravity wants us to go like this, and we want to go the opposite way, right? So that means we want to create length in our torso. We can do that by reaching, right? Reaching the arms up, or we can do that by sideways bending. So we're going to do that by taking your right hand to the chair, left arm is going to go all the way out and up and up and then over. Good. And we'll do that with our breath. So we're going to inhale and we're going to exhale. And we're going to inhale and we're going to exhale and we're going to inhale and we're going to exhale. Hold it there. Very good. Breathe and then release it. Oh, that feels good. Do you feel a little cattywampus? Yeah, you're a little more stretched out on that side, right? Okay, here we go, the other side. We're going to inhale up, exhale over. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Very good. And then release it. Now we're going to see if we can bring both arms all the way up. Now first we're going to start with robot arms. That's always a safe way to do a lengthening for your torso. I know sometimes shoulders are precarious, so if you can stay here, stay here. If you can go higher, go higher. If you can go higher, go higher. If you can go higher, go all the way, all the way, all the way up there. Look at that. You just grew about a half an inch right there in your torso. Good. Turn your hands other way and come all the way back down. Very good. Let's do that a few more times so we can come up in robot arms or we can shoot them all the way up to the sky. And if you can, see if you can bring those arms back towards your ears a little bit. Oh, look how tall and straight you are. And then turn those palms down, down towards the earth. And one more time, take it into robot arms, shoot it all the way up, all the way up, maybe take it back a little bit, and then release all the way down. And roll those shoulders. I hope by now I have gotten you into the habit of rolling your shoulders. So if I ever see you in the grocery store, I hope you roll your shoulders when I come by. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our feet position. So let's just take one foot up, doesn't matter which one, and we're just going to point and flex, but we're going to notice, right? I remember we always say that posture is conscientious. We're just being conscious of what we're doing. We're looking down at our hip, our knee, our ankle, and our toes. Is it all in a straight line? If we were to draw a line right now, is everything lined up straight as you point and flex your foot? Yeah, sometimes the foot wants to go inward and sometimes the foot wants to go outward. So we want to just make sure that we can keep everything in the straight line because that's going to affect your posture and your walking gait. Let's take the other side. So we're just going to point and flex. If you can, see if you can keep that knee a little bit straighter so we can start to stretch into those calf muscles a little bit and the Achilles tendon. Good. And then notice the alignment here. Everything's straight? I hope so. If not, just be working at it, okay? Good. And then release it. 
All right, now we're going to work on that alignment by doing a little bit of effort. We're going to work those muscles a little bit. So I want you to take your left leg and bring it all the way up. Good. And we're going to do a soccer kick. So it looks like this. We're going to kick the ball straight and then bend it and then kick it. Now, remember what you're doing. You're looking down and you're making sure your knee, your ankle, and your toes are in the same alignment. This is where we can find a little bit of misalignment as our feet might want to turn in or out. Good. And let's do the other side. Lift it up. And here we go. Kicking the soccer ball and noticing and paying attention, right? Might feel that a little bit in your knee and your ankle, maybe even your hip too. Good. And then release it. Good. And then do the pony. Yeah, working those feet. Good. Just imagine that your feet are bearing all the weight of your body, right? 25% of all your bones are in your feet. So we want to keep those agile, limber, because that's going to help a lot when we're standing. Good. So you got those powered up? Good, because we're going to come to standing. So come on up. I'm going to take my chair off to the side so you can see a little bit of the motion of my feet because we're going to take the same movement of the feet as we did sitting down. We're going to do it standing and I call this the pony. We're alternating good up and down on those tippy toes. Good. If you feel that your balance is a little bit precarious right now, I want you to put one hand on your hip. And if you feel your balance is like super duper right now, then put both hands on your hip and just do the pony a few more times. Good. This is a good move to do when you first stand up, coming out of bed in the morning, or when you've been sitting for a while and you need to stand up. This will help with dizziness. So getting the blood pumped from your heart back to your feet. Good. And then release it. Good. Now we're going to do ankle rock. So it looks like this. We're going to rock on our heels and our toes are coming up. I'm going to put my hand on my hip and you're going to spread your toes. Good. And then we're going to rock forward on our tippy toes and our heels come up. Oh yeah, do you feel that in your calves? Good. Come down to your heels, rock back, hold on to the chair. Good. And then we're going to rock it forward. Yeah, this is working our posture, of course, but also working our balance, huh? We're strengthening our legs by doing this. Good. And one more time. Rock it to the tippy toes and rock it to the heels. Very good. Now I'm going to take my chair in front of you. You can do the same because we're going to do a combination of upper and lower body work to get our posture straight and tall, right? So we're going to take one arm and cactus, let's say our left arm. We're going to stand up on our tippy toes just like we were doing, but we're going to stay on our tippy toes and we're going to walk over to the left as we do that. As far as you can, hold it onto the chair, of course. Good. Hold it there. Good. Walk all the way back to the center. Flip your hand and you're going the other way. I know you feel your calves work and I do. Good. And then come all the way back. Now rock to your heels. Your toes are up and ideally the balls of your feet are up. This will really stretch the back of your calves, will stretch your Achilles tendon and really good for your plantar fascia. So here we go. Arm and cactus again and we're going to waddle. It's a little waddle, waddle, waddle over to one side. Good. Back to the center. Flip it and go to the other side. Good. And back to the center. And when you come back, take one leg, give it a shake and the other leg and give it a shake. Very good. And now we're going to take our chair and flip it to the side. We're going to do some marching. So for anybody who's been in the military or any place where you've had a march a lot, you know how important marching is to creating strength in our lower part of our body. So we're just going to start to march. Good. Just march. Now with marching, we could take it a little higher and slower, right? If you take it a little higher and slower, you're going to find something that's very interesting going on. It's going to be this area right here of your body that's working a little bit more. It's your core. Go back to a faster march. You probably don't feel it as much there, right? So if you want to take that core work, you're going to go slow with the march. Very good. Powering up those legs and then release it. Okay, so we're all going to experiment now with what is good posture and what is poor posture. We can do it in ourselves and we can also observe it in other people. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the slump. Maybe it's called the senior slump. It looks like this. Do you see what I'm looking like? My knees are kind of bent. My shoulders are rolled forward. My head is jutted forward. My belly is all compressed. My heart and my lungs are all compressed, right? And now watch this magic. If I look like this to begin with, then we come up, 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 take the shoulders up, take the shoulders up, take them down and around. Good. Nice, straight, tall posture. Look at that. We can all do that. Okay, so let's experiment. Here we go. We're just going to slump. 
How's that feeling? It kind of feels good, huh? It kind of feels lazy. It kind of feels easy. You might feel a tension in your low back. You might feel like a tension in your neck or your shoulders. But think about holding this for very long. It's probably not very good comfort-wise. And of course, it doesn't look good visual-wise, right? So here we go. We're going to rise up. We're going to take those shoulders up towards the ears. Up, 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 up. Start to straighten your knees. Start to straighten your back. Take them all the way back and all the way down. And we've got our nice, strong posture. Woo! That was work, huh? So you got the feeling of what the slump feels like when you're standing, right? And how you can correct it just by doing a couple of mindful movements to get everything back into alignment. Because remember, it's the ears, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the ankles all in one straight line. There's a very secret part of your body that really helps to get everything nice and straight and tall. And do you know what that is? It is your core, the area from your lower belly button area right up into your chest area. This whole area is very important, not just for the engine of your body, but for the strength of your body. Your core is what helps you with your balance. It would helps you with that nice, strong, sturdy stature. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore a little bit of the work in our core. So taking one hand out to the side, we're going to lift one leg up, keep it lifted, and hold it. Good. And hold it. Good. Now you cannot be balancing very well if you're slumping. So there's a lot of effort here in the core as well as that standing leg. If it feels good, take one arm out into cactus. Good. Are you still holding? Good. Are you still straight and tall? I hope so. Now only if it feels good, maybe you can tap the chair or maybe you can let go. Oh, let's see if I can let go today. Oh, there we go. You're still holding, you're still balancing, you're still straight and tall, right? Good. And then release. Good. We'll go to the other side. So just lift the leg and as you slowly lift the leg, you could probably feel there's a little bit of an inner lift going on in this core. Good. And once you have that, hold it. Bring an arm out in cactus. Remember, arms and cactus always help to align your upper body. So keep it nice and steady. And if it's good, maybe tap the chair and maybe release it and come to full balancing pose. Good and then release it. Good. And now we're going to stretch out our legs because when we hold, we actually use a lot of muscle strength. So we're going to stretch that out a little bit. Take one leg back behind you, your hands on your hip, and just do a, a little ankle pump there. Good. Just in and out. Your leg is straight. You're on your tippy toes and then pulling back into your calves. Good. And then we'll do the other one. So take a leg back, you're on your tippy toes, and then lean back into those calves. Try to keep that knee straight so you can get a nice stretch all along the back side of your leg. Very good. And then bring it back to the center. Good. Now we're ready for another balancing pose. Remember, balancing and posture go together. If you don't have good posture, you're not going to have good balance. So we're going to lift one leg up. Good. And this time we're going to take it all the way out in front of us and point and flex the foot. Oh yeah, this is a little bit more work, isn't it? I know it is. We're using that beautiful quadricep muscle. This is the muscle that keeps your knees strong. Good. And again, if you can, and only if it serves you, tapping the chair or taking it to your hip and balancing. Oh, and I lost it. It's okay. Balance is all about practice. Good. And then release it. And then the other side. So we're lifting up that leg. We're going to straighten it out in front of us, pointing and flexing the foot. Now remember that little bit of an inner lift. If you find yourself caving down, take that little bit of that lift. Oh yeah, you just got a little taller, I know. I did too. Pointing and flexing, tapping the chair if that serves you. Good. And then hands on your hips, only if it works. Wow, I feel a little bit steadier on this side. As I said that, oh, good, and then come all the way back down. Good, and then we'll do a couple kick your butts. It looks like this. Good, and that, yeah. Just kicking the butt, stretching out those quad muscles. Very good, and back to the center. So come on down into your chair. And then we're going to end it with a core strengthening. As I mentioned when I was standing, your core is really the pivotal point of your posture and allowing you to be strong and erect. So we're going to take the legs out a little bit wider and we're going to sway to one side and make a little loop and sway to the other side. Yeah, just swaying. Now swaying is a very important part 
of your balance, your coordination, and your posture because we are now using our core muscles. Very good. And the more you can sway to the side and hold it, good. Loop it down, sway to the side and hold it. And loop it and sway and hold. And loop it and sway and hold. Very good, coming back to the center. Now we're gonna clear the table. So one hand comes in, we're pretending we're clearing the table out, good. And clearing the table, using those core muscles, taking a little bit of that twisting motion in the core as well. Good, and one more time. Good. This time we're gonna sway with our arms and cactus and we're gonna sway to one side, to the center and sway to the other side and to the center. Good. This is a little bit harder, isn't it? Yeah. I've got the arms and cactus to keep your torso nice and aligned, but right now we're just working those core muscles going side to side. Good. And then take your hands to your hips and we're going to do a very similar motion. We're just going to take those ribs and move them side to the middle and side. Oh, can you isolate that upper part of your body and keeping your lower part in the same position? That's hard. That's working our core. And when you bring it back to the center, walk your feet back in. We're going to work one more part of our core. And this is something that we need to practice and etch into our beings. And that is folding, leaning, and bending in a very healthy way. So that is also something that degrades as we get older, right? As our posture rounds, we tend to round when we go down to pick something up. And we never want to do that because that can cause some issues in our spine and we don't want any fractures in our spine. So when we fold and when we bend, we're coming from our core and we're using the strength of our torso to do that. So first of all, I want you to take your hands on your laps and then pull your elbows back as far as you can. Good. So now you feel like you're overly exaggerating your posture, right? And then take a breath and then exhale, lean forward, but keep those hands where they are. Lean forward, look down at the floor, and then come all the way back up. Take a breath. Exhale, lean forward. Inhale, back up. And one more time. Exhale, lean forward. And inhale, come back up. Good. So those are your core muscles used for bending, but now we're going to challenge them by doing, yes, of course, cactus. So do it again. So inhale, exhale, lean forward. Pull those shoulders back, good. And then inhale, come back up. And exhale, lean forward. Inhale, come back up. I hope you're feeling it in your core, I am. Take, take a breath, inhale. Exhale, lean forward. And then inhale, back up. And last one, exhale, lean forward. And inhale, back up, good. And then release your arms and roll your shoulders. Very good. So thanks for joining me on this posture focus chair yoga class. Now we can see that posture is not just sitting or standing up nice and tall. It has a lot of components to it, right? It has our muscle strength, our joint health, and of course, our core strength. So come back often. I promise you, you will get stronger if you do the work. And we'll see you the next time. Namaste.